Smacking, cracking, and watching. Follow me on Twitter. Subscribe. Smilf season one, episode eight. You know they got renewed for season two. What a blessing. This episode is called Mark's Lunch and Two Cups of Coffee. Let's get to it. Powerful episode. Very, very deep episode. I feel anyone that's willing to touch on the topic of being molested, or they got to be a pretty bold person. And a uh, shout out to Frankie Shaw for uh, putting that out there. Man, it's a reality for some. And dang, it was deep, man. It was a deep episode. Or ball or bold, whatever you want to call it, that haircut. I wasn't feeling it. It was very Cleopatra to me. This chick actually went on a date with her dad, which turned out to be not her dad. And she tried to brush it off. And I felt like, dang, man, Bridget, man, she's trying. She's trying. And it took a lot. It took a whole lot of a whole lot of act right a whole lot of huevos to go out there and do that you know so they start this episode off with bridget basically at doing an outcry man telling her therapist what happened we're making these phone calls to her friends and i want to say one of them had to be her homegirl eliza because she said lizzie you know her daddy did what he did to her so tutu was aware which is different because most people on television they make it be a secret they make it out to be a secret and the mother doesn't know the father doesn't know um this whole episode was deep like i said she was in need of help watching bridget kind of binge eat her her anger away her frustrations away you know you have an issue but you choose to not correct it that's a problem and we need to really work on those signs as you know brothers and sisters out here in the world out though man because she did some really reckless angry monkey stumping in the bathroom and i'm like girl don't do it what are we doing why are we doing this now was that her boss's son or was that the dude from the store somebody let me know drop those comments below please and thank you well, bridget is the person who goes in who goes in the fridge at your job the person who takes your can of pop you leave in there, your water bottle, your TV dinner, your pizza, pizza. The person who sneaks and your sandwich is missing It's Bridget. She didn't ate all the donuts. First of all, anybody who can eat, giving us that Fargo. You remember that episode of Fargo? If y'all watched it when uh, Homeboy, when the evil villain character, when the wolf was in the stall throwing up and eating and throwing up. It was nasty. Had food all in his mouth felt Bridget was it was disgusting <sighs> just in need of help man um getting the the nerve the energy to confront her past her inner demons and she tried but the guy wasn't her dad but like he said hey if I was the guy I'd handle that and for Tutu to be there Nelson to be there put aside how she felt her home girl her best friend that girl is the truth Eliza for her to be there that meant everything. Now, Rafi, I don't know about him because he might need some help. He might be messing up right about now. But tendering the guy who she kind of thinks is her dad, which makes you think if you're uh, if you're distant from your parents, would you recognize them? Is that a possibility for you? For those who don't have a, a brother and sister in their life, would you kind of? It's been ten years or it's been twenty years. Would you recognize them? You know, you put on pounds. You don't. You get gray. You get. You know, things change. Would you recognize your would you recognize your abuser? I just can't stress the fact that um I felt bad for her when that man said, I'm not your dad and Tutu was the one to come down. Like your father. I was married to this man for four miserable years. I think I kinda know what he would look like. I guess I'm just I guess I'm still just trying to figure out is Joe her uncle or is Joe the boyfriend? I'm confused. But either way, I like his character, I like what he brings. Um, he brings kind of the honest, vulnerable man in the situation because most characters on TV sitcoms, you know, they try to be, they're the, they're the Al Bundy dad or, you know, the person, just the goofy neighbor. Like, too, too depressed, but he's just, I don't, I don't know, I just don't want him to get hurt. I feel like, will he die? If he dies, it's going to send Tutu over, over the top, you know, but we have this trip to look forward to, which is awesome. I think the show is on the good path. Like I said, they've been renewed for season two. Uh, Showtime is doing really well with uh, Shameless, with Smilf, and now they have this new show called The Shy that's dropping January 7th. And the real issues, they're showing real issues, real day-to-day -day problems that families go through. And this single mother who gets it in, who's trying to, you know, 
stay on the right path, get her money, work how she can work. We see different jobs. We see different guys she's dating. We see that struggle between her and Ralphie, her child's father, her trying to be the best mother she can, but, you know, she kind of had a rough upbringing. I mean, seven years old and that happening to you. It's not cool. Congrats to them for their Golden Globe nominations. I think they have two, and... We'll look forward to that. I want to say Golden Globes also come on January 7th, Sunday. The way that the camera is able to get these stories out there to us, I think it's creative and it's fly. And I like it. And that's why I'm here for this show and this episode. Two cups of coffee and Mark's lunch. Wow. Um, I don't really have any questions, man, besides uh, I, also, I like how they snuck in Jennifer Aziz's uniform, her jersey in the bathroom while she was getting back shots. Uh, have a safe new year. Will she still chase her father in season two? Possibly. Um, will Rafi and Nelson make it? I don't know. Nelson's a pretty dang on stand-up woman. And she's a little insecure. But that's everybody in every relationship. Alright, until the next time. Peace.